This house has stood for almost 150 years and has had very few repairs. One family has owned it for almost five generations and farmed on it for virtually the entire 150 years. Carol Rogers, the third generation of the Rogers family to live his entire life here for 85 years, knows the history of this house the best. Yes, my grandfather bought along about 1850 or something, sometime in there. Maybe a little later. I'm not sure. Maybe my dad was before my dad. It was after my dad was born. He was born in 1862. So I'm not just sure about that. The house hadn't always been located where it is. Yeah, that's according to my Aunt Anna that lived here so long. She said it was actually built down about where that tank is there, gas tank, right about in there someplace. And for some reason or other, the ground was let, wasn't holding up right or something. They give us soft spots or springy spots, and then it was springs or something. So they moved it up here, and how they moved it, I have no idea. I don't see how they ever did it. Unless they tore it all down, brick for bricks, and rebuild it up here. Maybe they did. Since it is a farmhouse, there had been a barn a few hundred feet from the house. Unfortunately, the barn was struck by lightning in the summer of 1982 and burnt to the ground. Probably, it probably had been built back in the 1800s sometime. After, after the house was built, I think the barn come along later. Maybe there was a smaller barn or something. I don't know really. The entire farm had originally consisted of about 80 acres, but over time some of it was sold for road construction and other various reasons. Yeah, it must have been 70 acres on the other side of the road before the, the bypass went in. I think they took about 10 so there must be around, must be around 60 acres, I guess. Because there was no plumbing in the middle 1800s, houses relied on springs for water supply, and this house is no exception. And there's a spring down there, and I think that's one reason it was built on this side of the road. There wasn't much land on this side. But that spring was there, which was great. This spring produced a good amount of water, enough for the whole city of Salem, where this house is located. This spring down here now is interesting. That spring was a good spring, and the city always, the city of Salem, about all they had for water was springs. They bought up springs or released them or whatever. And that's about the only water they got. So they bought the little piece of ground the spring down here was in and they piped it to clear into town. As cars developed and became a must-have, a garage was necessary. Well, I built the garage along about 1950 in there sometime. Had it built. The basement is where much of the food was stored because they didn't have the convenience of grocery stores like today. Yeah, we kept canned stuff in there and potatoes and anything that needed to be a little cool. The floor of the basement is solid earth, which might have been to help keep it cooler during the summer so that any stored food wouldn't spoil. Soon, electricity developed and the house was wired to allow for the use of refrigerators, lighting, and heating. A furnace was installed, and the eight fireplaces that the house is equipped with were no longer needed. Overall, the house has remained the same throughout the past 150 years. The design and architecture of the house represents the simplicity of life in the 1800s. From the stained glass decorating the front entrance to the staircase in the front hall. After 150 years, the house stands tall and proud, just as it has from the very beginning. Just as it had when it was first built, when people built things with pride and dignity. This house is essentially a part of them, representing the hard work and pride 
that was a part of their lives.